Okay, so um, welcome to the first lab exercise. Um, I want to discuss with you a few things uh, important for this lab exercise. Um, so one thing that's uh, really, really important, that's the first thing on uh, page three of your lab, um, first lab exercise, is this idea of anatomical position. Um, you know, whenever you're seeing a patient they could be in any sort of position, but clinicians need a way, a standard position so that they can quickly be able to communicate with each other. Um, can you imagine if you're trying to say, well, where to insert the scalpel or put suction or something like that, and well, is it my left or your left, uh, you know, of the, you know, two different clinicians in the room? Is, or is it the left of the patient? Or, you know, is it up or down, but the patient's standing on their head? You know, I mean, there's just so many uh, different ways that a body could be positioned in whenever you're seeing them that in order to really describe things, and communicate well, particularly when learning, uh, you need a standard position. And that's what anatomical position is. Now you'll notice here uh, this individual is standing in anatomical position. Um, some things that are really important, uh, toes are pointed straight forward. They're not, you know, out to the side like a ballerina. They're just straight forward, okay? Um, head is not up, it's not down, it's not to the side. It's level and straightforward, okay? And then you'll notice here that the hands are facing with the palms the same direction as the nose, okay? So palms are facing forward, okay? Now, once you have this standard position, um, there's a few things that we need to know about the body. Um, now, what we're going to talk about first are surface landmarks. Surface means anything on the surface. So we're not digging deep into the body. We're just what's on the surface of this body. Okay. And, you know, so for example, instead of calling this the arm, well, there's different regions of this arm. So this top region here is going to be the brachial region, the front of the elbow, antecubital. The lower arm is going to be antebrachial. Okay, so there are all of these names uh, related to surface features, and you must memorize them all. They are the bread and butter of clinicians. You are, in most fields, expected to know these words as you know your own name. Okay, so... Um, there are these labeling exercises and different things in this part of the lesson to be able to help you learn these terms. But eventually you've got to memorize them. And you've got to be to the point where somebody could point to this region and say, what's the name? And you can come up with that of your memory. Um, I do want to say that the lab practical exams are fill in the blank. There are no word banks. It is not multiple choice. And so you must know these by memory. Okay, so to begin learning them, to learn some of the surface features and locations, um, I want to show you um, uh, uh, in class exercise. It may help you in your studying as you learn these. It may not. Um, you're welcome to use it or not. If you go to um, the course webpage and you look here under this at home active learning uh, the exercises that I'll show you will be both for the two language of anatomy files you can download those print those out and do those with me if you would like okay so this is showing um, an exercise that I often use with my students in class you'll notice that there are two printouts here one is um, a printout of a body from the front, and the other is a printout of the body on the back. Um, what I have here are all the surface anatomy terms. And so my suggestion for first starting to learn these terms, because there are actually a lot of them, and I recognize that, 
is to first go through and find the ones that you already know. You walk into this class knowing some things about the body. Your brain is not completely empty regarding the body. And so my suggestion is first pick out those that you know. So for example, this one right here says nasal. Well, nasal, nasal congestion, nasal sinuses. There's all sorts of things that we, where we run into the word nasal. And so I know that's at the nose. And so I'm gonna put it up here right by the nose, okay? And so we can go through here and find a lot of these. Abdominal, most of us know what the abdomen is, and that's gonna be this um, stomach area across here, okay? And so I'm gonna put abdominal right there because I recognize that it's abdominal there, okay? And so my suggestion is that to first begin learning these terms, that you go through this and see which ones do you know and place those on there. Do that without looking at the book first and then I want you to go back into your lab manual and I want you to check and make sure that you actually did get those labels onto the correct places. If you find one that you got incorrect, I want you to star that word because that's one of your trouble spots and you may need to spend extra time on that spot okay and then maybe highlight with a different color those that you don't know at all okay so that's my first suggestion for first identifying what you already know and then spending your time learning those things that you don't yet know Okay, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, pull up some of the figures that are from the lab manual and I'll go through each individual one, but I would suggest you do this first, see how far you get, and then continue on um, with this presentation. Okay, so now we're going to go over uh, anatomical position and surface landmark features. And so um, first what I want to talk about is the need for anatomical position. So this uh, individual here is stand, shown standing in anatomical position. And you're going to notice some key features about it. Toes are pointing straight forward, not off to the sides, not inward. They're straight forward. Person is standing up. Their head is straight up and down and looking forward so they're not looking back. Not like this, not over to the sides, straight forward. And then the other really important feature is that the palms of the hands are also facing forward. Okay. Now the reason why we have this is because whenever we're talking about body parts, learning about them, discussing them, potentially in you know an operating room, you want a standard position of the body to refer to everything by, so that you're not asking, well. It's on the left, do you mean my left, your left, the patient's left? Um, and so to get around those problems, we have just this standard position. Okay, now the next thing that you need to know is that every little part of the surface of the body, okay, has a name for it. And you need to know these terms. You need to know them by memory. They are the bread and butter of health professionals. You will be expected to know these terms as you know your own name. Okay. What that means for my exams is that whenever you go to take your lab practical exams, you will be expected to identify uh, surface regions and there is no word bank. It is not multiple choice. You must pull that word out of your memory. Okay. So you really do need to know these very well, which means you need to practice pulling them out of your head by memory. If you just read through the diagrams over and over again, I can almost guarantee you that you will fail. Okay, so that said, let's talk about these surface regions. Now there's a whole bunch of activities within your homework that gives you some practice learning some of these surface region names. But um, I thought I'd go through uh, the images. These are found in your uh, lab manuals and so you are welcome to uh, pull
pull those out and follow those along. These same images are found in your notes as well. Okay, so first of all, let's uh, talk about the, uh, the first region. So the cephalic region, you may have heard of hydrocephaly, ceph, C-E-P-H, that refers to head. Okay, and so that's going to be this entire region right up here. Now, we have this large region called the cephalic region, but within that there are subregions, just like there's the city of Amarillo, but within the city there are neighborhoods, Sleepy Hollow, Puckett Place, those sorts of things. Okay? So within the cephalic region, first we have the frontal region, that's essentially the forehead, this part right up here. Okay? And one thing I should tell you is that by knowing that this region up here is the frontal region. Not only do you know the surface, which is the frontal, you also know the bone, which is the frontal bone. You also know the part of the brain, the frontal lobe, okay? And you also know a muscle that's right here called the frontalis. So it's really worth your while to learn these names now because that means you will have already learned some of the material for later in the semester and it's going to make your life easier. All right, as we go through, I'm going to give you some memory tips as well on how I remember these words. Um, if they help, great. If they don't, just forget what I said. And if you come up with your own way to remember them, that's really great. Please email your instructor so your instructor can share it with everybody. Um, I've had some students over the years come up with some really great memory tricks for remembering some of these names, and um, I share them and I use them. Okay, so the next region is going to be the orbital region here, okay, and the orbital region is the eyes, all right, and what I think of, I think of an orbit, an orbit, like a planet orbits the sun, it goes around it, and I think, well, maybe to remember orbit, I think of somebody putting eyeliner orbiting the eye, so orbital, where the eyeliner is, all around the eye, okay. Uh, the next one, most people know this one, nasal, so that's going to refer to your nose. Underneath that is going to be buckle. Buckle, or sometimes you might hear, uh, hear it said buccal. Uh, that's going to be your cheek regions. And the way I remember that is I think of Louis Armstrong was a trumpet player, and whenever he'd play, he'd puff his cheeks out a lot of times. He'd puff that buckle region out. And I think, well, maybe Louis Armstrong had a buckle on his belt while he puffed his cheeks out. Okay. Oral, that's going to be referring to the mouth. Okay, and so I remember that. I think oral hygiene, keeping your mouth clean. Your dentist probably talks to you about that. Okay, so oral means mouth. Um, now this is one you may want to put a star next to because this is one that people commonly get confused, and that's going to be the mental region. A lot of times people hear mental. If you say someone's acting mental, you're acting a little crazy. And so a lot of people think, well, it must have to do with the head. Well, no. In fact, it has to do with the chin. This is how I remember it. I think if somebody's acting mental or they're acting crazy, I might go, oh, they're so mental. And I touch my chin. Okay, so that's how I remember it. Mental is chin. Put a star by that one. It's a bit counterintuitive. Okay, cervical. Cervical is going to be everything from the bottom of the head to where the shoulders begin. So it's the neck, and it's going to be the front part of the neck as well as the back part of the neck. Cervical, it's going to be good to remember this name because you're going to have vertebra, which are the bones that make up your spine. They're going to be called cervical vertebra in this region. You're also going to have cervical nerves that come out of the spinal cord in this region. Okay. So next we're going to have thoracic, and thoracic is this whole entire region in orange. Again, it's a big region, and so within the thoracic region, we are going to have subregions. So within that, first right here down the middle is going to be the sternal region, okay, right down there. Now, some of you may be aware of the bone in that region called the sternum. Please, for the practical exam, the surface region, you're touching your skin. You're not touching directly the bone here. You're touching your skin. It is the sternal 
surface region. The bone underneath that's deeper inside is the sternum. So please put sternal if you're asked for the surface landmark region. Okay, axillary right here and right here, that's essentially your armpits. So I think axillary A for armpit. Mammary, uh, that's going to be the breast region. Both men and women have a mammary region, uh, even though women only have, uh, or unless, unless a man has cancer generally, uh, or uh, sometimes takes uh, uh, steroids, uh, generally only women are going to have fully developed mammary glands, which produce the milk. Okay, abdominal region, it's this purple part right up here. And again, a subregion within the abdominal region is going to be the umbilical region. That's where your belly button is. That's where the umbilical cord was attached to your mother at one point. Okay. Next, we're going to have the pelvic region, which is the larger region here. And within that, we're going to have the groin, also called the inguinal. And you're going to hear a few different things referred to as inguinal. And then pubic, of course, is going to be right in the genital area. Okay, now let's talk about the upper limb. The upper limb is going to be the entire upper arm. And just like we've seen, this is a theme. We've got the big region, which is the upper limb, and then we will have the subregions. So a chromial region, that's going to be the shoulder region. Okay. Uh, it has that name because one of the parts of the bones in this region is called the acromion. So it's worth remembering this name. Brachial region is going to be this upper part of the arm until you get to the elbow. The front of the elbow is called the antecubital region. The back has a different name. The antebrachial region is going to be the lower arm from the bottom of the elbow down to the top of the wrist. And then carpal is the wrist area. Manus is the entire hand. The way I remember this is the word manus is very similar to the Spanish word mano, which means hand. So that may help you if you are familiar with Spanish. The hand also has subregions. The first one I'm going to talk about is the palmar region, which is the entire palm. Okay, so that entire palm region. Okay, and then you've got the fingers, which are the digits. We then have a special name for the thumb called polex. Now, the way I remember this is I think if I'm taking a pole, Think of the name Polex. If I'm taking the, if I'm taking a poll, I might ask you if you like something. And if you did, you'd give me a thumbs up. You'd put your Polexes in the air. Okay. So poll, if you're taking a poll, you might give me a thumbs up with your Polex. Okay. Now let's move on to the lower limb. Again, lower limb is this entire region, and we're going to have subregions within that. Coxal. This is one I want you to put a star by because this one is commonly uh, missed initially. People see the word coccyx and if they know some or coxal, and if they know some of the bones, they think of coccyx, and then they put this right in the middle of the glutes. Well, that's actually not where it is. It's counterintuitive, but this name is actually based off of the name for the hip bones, which are called the os coxa. And so coxal region is going to be your hips, the sides of your hips. Okay, femoral region is going to be this entire part of your upper leg here. Please know the name for the bone that's deep inside is the femur. The name for the surface region is the femoral region. So please do not put femur, put femoral. Okay, patella, some of you again may be familiar with the bone underneath called the patella, but please keep in mind, and it's just the front of the knee, the back of the knee has a different name, but patellar, okay, 
is the surface region. The bone is the patella. So again, please give me patellar, not patella. Okay, then we go to the crural region. This is going to be the shin on the front. And then the side of the lower leg is called the fibular region. Now let's go to the foot. The foot. Okay, the foot is called the pedal region. And I think if I'm pedaling my bicycle, I'm pedaling the pedals with my foot. So the foot is the pedal region. There are subregions, tarsal, which is ankle, digital, which is toes. So you may notice that there are digits, digital region here are your toes. You also have a digital region in your hand, which is your fingers. And then hallux is the big toe. And so the way I remember this is I think of some hoity-toity man called Alex, who for some reason is very proud of his big toe which he calls hallux. So Alex with his hallux, which is his big toe. It's kind of silly, but if it helps you remember it, then please feel free to use it. Okay, now let's look at the back side. Okay, we still have the cephalic region. Uh, one thing we didn't talk about on the side is the otic region, which is gonna be your ears. Now the very back of your head, right back here, is called the occipital region. Okay, those are still part of the cephalic, but we're just looking from the back side to see the occipital region. And otic, of course, is on the side. Okay, dorsum. Dorsum is going to be this entire back area in blue. And again, it is going to have subregions. So, first, we've got the scapular region. That's going to be your shoulder blades, is what it's commonly called. The vertebral region is where your vertebra are, so it's right where your spine is, all the way from top to bottom. Lumbar region is just next to that, and it's that lower back region right next to your vertebral region, right next to your spine. Okay. There will also be lumbar vertebra and lumbar nerves, if that helps you. Sacrum is getting down right between the glutes. Okay, so the sacral region, and keep in mind sacrum is the bone. Sacral is the surface region. And then we've got the gluteal region, which is your rear end. Okay, both of those. And then we have the perineal region. Perineal region, it's not really pictured well here but it extends from the pubic region on the front all the way to your anus. So it's that part right in between, okay? All right, if we're looking on the upper limb, the unique name here is the olecranal. Olecranal, which is the back of the elbow. The lower limb, unique names for the back part of the lower limb. We have popliteal, which is the back of the knee. And then we have sural, which is going to be that calf area. Okay. So other regions of the upper limb and lower limb stay the same. This up here is the shoulder, it's still acromial. This is the upper arm, it's still brachial. This down here is antebrachial. If we look here on the leg, this top part is still femoral, okay? So what I've done is I've just given you the parts of the upper and lower limbs here that are different names than the ones on the other sheet. Okay, in the pedal region, on the back side again, we've got the calcaneal region, which is your heel, and then plantar, so I think if I plant my feet on the ground, the plantar region, the sole of my foot, is what's touching the ground. Okay. So, those are the different regions, names for the regions of the body. Um, some suggestions on how to study for it. I've given you the active learning exercise. You can use that. You can repeat the homeworks over and over again. And then, 
probably one of the biggest things you can do. It's very low tech. So I would just take a piece of paper, go to your uh, go to your diagrams in your lab manual, piece of paper or sticky note, cover these up on either side, and then practice naming them by memory. Uh, spelling does count on the lab practicals, and so I would also practice potentially typing them out so you get used to spelling them properly.